Okay, Mr. Solutions, we are almost done with your cleaning here. Oh, I just got to check hello. one more thing here in the back uh -huh. upper left side yeah, of your hello. mouth. And oh, oh, oh boy. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, no, there's something back there we got to take care oh. of. Uh, one second, let me, let me grab this other tool here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, just uh, hold still. Uh, just, uh, just hold still. Uh, now, guy. I'm gonna get it out. I'm just gonna get it right out of there. Oh boy, you know that didn't work. That didn't work. Hold on, let me grab. I, I got just the thing. I haven't, I haven't used this one in a while, but it's, uh, it's definitely the right tool for the job. Let me grab this here. Oh boy, I'm sorry about that. I didn't. I, I don't usually slip like that. Oh, that's it's looking bad. Uh, uh, fine, it's looking uh, fine. Here, let me just grab this thing right here and. Uh, oh, wait, wait. nurse. Over. Uh, over. Where's the nurse? Hold on, we're, we're just gonna we're, get the nurse. Here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> welcome everybody. Hey everybody, welcome to this perfectly normal podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if this is your first time listening, just go go listen to a different intro <laughs> and see what that does for you. You know, um, um, my name's Graham. My name's Ashcon. A.K.A. Dentist Patient <laughs> over here. And uh, we answer questions. That's um, right. Like right that here. you send us. And, and we're going to do that today, too. Which, uh, and the question for today is, <laughs> what are the first steps to starting a flotation business? Mm. Yeah. Well, writing in was a, a great one. Yeah, you're off to a yeah, really good, good start. And listening to, this pod, listening to these intros in general is going to really prepare you for the long road There's ahead. There's a secret message coded into each one. <laughs> a little nugget. Invaluable float wisdom that was just planted there. Yeah, if you string them all together. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's... It, I can see how it, it's it's overwhelming when you're looking at the entire thing. I mean, there's there's a big construction project ahead of you, and there's a lot of information to absorb, and you know these things have been around for years and years, and there's a lot of money that you're about to spend. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. it's a good chunk of money to to open one of these things up. So it's it is it is useful to you know go back and be like, okay, like where where do I actually kind of leap first here? So, I mean, just a ton of research, as simple as it might sound. And, and obviously, already you're in that vein if you're, yeah. if you're listening to our podcast I mean, and I you found say, us talking at you. Like, for number one, you should float a bunch. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Like, that made some of you maybe rolling your eyes. Like, of course, that's such an like, obvious piece <laughs> of float advice, Ashcon. But <laughs> you'd be surprised how many people come to us all sorts of questions, you know? <laughs> they're, they're looking for, like the this like granular financial information and this and that and like they haven't even floated or maybe they floated one time or i'm like it's crazy yeah it's it's it honestly the first time that happened during one of our apprentices was very early on and i'm just like what do you mean you've never hopped in a float tank <laughs> you flew all the way out to portland and paid money to take a training class you've never floated and they're just like i just knew it was for me <laughs> Like, I but hope it's true. So. If you, there, there's a portion of you listening who have like who that's you, and you're, you've listened to like all of our podcasts and never hopped in a float. Tank, yeah. So so get in one. Go go get a membership from your closest float center and, and float. Like start to actually float on a regular basis. That should that should definitely be uh, step one for you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Step two. Open more a research. float center. Yeah. Oh, open sure. a step, <laughs> step three. Profit. <laughs> Um, right, but I mean, it's it really like almost more than something specific to start uh, putting into your brain. Just really starting to go out there and see everything that's going on because there is it's from construction to water sanitation to marketing to staffing. I mean, there's all the skills you need to run a regular business plus a healthy dose of water chemistry and yeah. like crazy uh, contracting knowledge and experience. So, so there's like the absorption phase, like just <laughs> yeah. get that info into your brain. And there's a lot of places with just free resources. I mean, the, you know, obviously. Float Tank Solutions, yeah, like, for one. <laughs> great site. Great guys who run it. Yeah, I mean, there's this podcast. <laughs> we have a big blog on our, on our Float Tank Solutions site. There's a number of, of free materials. One is like called an About Float Tanks Guide that's literally just like a primer in, in learning about what the heck float tanks are and their benefits and the history and, and the industry. Like these, you know, there's a lot of just free information out there for, for getting yourself up and running. Um, there's other podcasts like the Art of the Float podcast. There's a Facebook group called uh, called Float Collective. Yep, which that, uh, you know it's it's just for float center owners and yeah. people who are really serious about getting into it. So if you apply and don't get in just yet, you know don't don't hold that against the group or anything like that. It's really you know just been trying to 
Um, and, and by the way, we do not run the, <laughs> the Flow Collective, no. so uh, we have nothing to do with these decisions. But uh, understandably, um, as the industry grows, it's really been trying to maintain this uh, state of just sort of being people who are actively in the industry. Yep. Um, but once you, you know, pretty much like once you have a building or, or anything like that, it's a great group to join and, and get nice feedback and advice on. Um, and the search feature in that and on our blog too, just like searching big archives of pre-existing float information for whatever you happen to be looking for. Awesome. Like that's a, it's a great way to go and just make sure that you're getting the collective wisdom of people who came before. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I guess, I mean, honestly, like the, the kind of like unfortunate but realistic side of me wants to say like take a good look at the finances involved you know like yep. you may really want to open a float center but it's it's expensive like it honestly is is an expensive business to to open up for for the size of shop you're opening and, and things like that there there's expensive build outs required and you know probably a good early step is to realistically see how much these things cost and understand if this like is something that makes sense for you or if this is like 10 times higher than the amount of money you think you could put together through whatever your sell for bank loans or, or things like that because that you know that might be a kind of reality check that is good to hit sooner rather than later yeah i mean talk to other float tanks and owners along those same lines too you know just like financially you need to kind of like vet out and make sure this is going to work for you Make sure it's actually the lifestyle you want. Like I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's not an uncommon belief to go into this, and and because it's a relaxation business, and and it's centered around uh, healing and and kind of doing the least amount of anything that you possibly can as a human being. That the actual <laughs> act of running a float center is likewise going to be kind of a mellow, relaxed experience. And yeah, Ashkan's already laughing over there because it is not, so not. It's like it's the, not. it's the and any float tank center owner will tell you that too. It's I usually call it trial by water. <laughs> it's like getting into the business and in your first year, but it's a little crazy. Like providing that that healing space of nothingness for your clients takes a lot on the back end and on the owner side. So, you know, uh, just like it's it's worth kind of doing a gut check on making sure that this is going to be viable for you price-wise to open up. Like do, do a gut check and make sure that offering this kind of service is also the lifestyle you personally want and that you're you're prepared for the amount of work that goes into it. Yeah, and, and prepared for, you know, working the shop. If you're going into this thinking you're going to open a float center and then hire a bunch of employees and then you'll be, you know, sitting in a hammock, like raking the money in at some point within five months, it's not usually how it goes. Like most float centers in their first very, like several years of operation, the owners are in there full time working the front desk and cleaning rooms and getting people into tanks. And, yeah. you know, that's that's part of the part of the gig. So if that is not in line with your vision, that might be something that that you want to come to terms with or realize that maybe this is not for you. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's almost true of, of business in general, too. Yeah. Um, which is, <laughs> like, if this is your first go at any business, uh, also know you're starting on kind of, like, hard mode with the Float Tank Center. Um, but with any business, I mean, you, you kind of need to be in it in order to uh, actually make the documents for other people to follow you and make sure that you know how you want things run before you just turn it over to to a staff. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, you're going to be a really bad manager if you have very little experience working in your own shop. And I guess I would say the next thing like, is just get training from someone or get consulting help or, or find someone to help you through a lot of the early process. You know, I mean, it's you can throw a bunch of stuff into your brain and still have no idea kind of where the shortcomings are or what you're missing and I cannot speak strongly enough to the fact that you should take the advice of someone who has come before you. You know, there are lots of people out there in the float industry now who offer consulting or or will actually have you out at their shop to um, allow you to shadow their shop employees or do a kind of training. You know, obviously we do that with Float Tank Solutions. We do our monthly apprenticeship and we have other shadowing uh, options for our shop and we do on-site consulting, but you know, we're not the only ones. Um, Art of the Float uh, with Dylan, the other kind of big podcast, does consulting as well. And just in general, making sure to like not think that you're smart enough or experienced enough that you don't need to get help from people who came before you is really important. Otherwise, you will just end up making understandable but really unfortunate mistakes that can cost you a lot of money and, and heartache. Yeah, when people come out to our apprenticeship classes, it's really like... If, if they have not taken any concrete steps towards anything yet is often the best experiences that they can have, you know, because if, if you found a location already or if you have already like secured a certain amount of money, 
like most of the time you're going to find out that the location is not actually what you wanted or that was not enough money or, you know, that's, that's the kind of information you're going to be getting from, from talking to people and getting that kind of more detailed insight into this. And so it's really nice to get that information before you've secured yourself to anything or, or kind of committed to anything that may, uh, now that you know more be something that is not actually ideal for you. Yeah. And, and every single time people are so grateful that they've come out, especially early in the process. Yeah. And anytime people come out late, you know, like we've had people out to, to do our trainings when they're halfway through construction. And those are just like the most heartbreaking, <laughs> I guess, experience. I mean, they're literally just leaving the construction class, like calling their contractors, being like, stop what you're doing. Like, we cannot do this. It's going to mess up everything, you know? Like, yeah. And usually what happens is they get halfway through the construction day and they just put their entire construction on hold until they finish and can kind of get a better grasp on things. So, I mean, yeah, again, it's really easy to make uh, the same sorts of mistakes that many other float centers have made before. And it's a result of this industry being weird and salty and soundproofy and kind of all these things that aren't usually mixed together. So, again, you know, after you've kind of actually floated a bunch, after you've shoved a ton of knowledge in your head, make sure that you you hear from people who came before you and, and get that hands-on help. Um, and have some people you can call like during construction as questions come up. Like you should have someone on hand who you can call for advice. And fortunately, the entire float industry is is behind you in that sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, those are those are good starting steps. Like at that point, I think most people start actually looking for a location once they have that kind of base of knowledge and everything like that, and and it all makes sense, and they know it's going to work for them. Because that that can take anywhere from like perfect, you found the great space. In a week, to some people have searched for over a year for that right location. Yeah, so yeah, for that's sure. a good thing to think about as as one of your first uh, kind of concrete steps forward. And also, if you're like far enough along, even before you you get a location, consider getting a test float tank for your house or your apartment or whatever it is. <laughs> um, you know, if you're not planning on having a giant built-in um, cabin or something that has to be uh, firmly attached to the area you're building it. Uh, I always like to kind of shock the students who are coming through the uh, the apprenticeship class by suggesting they get a float tank of their own. And I think it's just great to both get hands-on experience with the water chemistry, to get to float a bunch, like we were saying, and make sure you actually like it, and to find out if you like this tank. You know, if you're thinking about getting five of them, having one to play around with early is is really nice. And if you do like it, you can move it to your float tank center. If you don't like it, the resale market for float tanks is pretty high, so you can actually just sell it. And there are some people who followed that advice and gotten a float tank at home and emailed me and said they don't, they've decided not to open a float tank center. And they realized in the process, they're like, actually, I was just trying to figure out a way for me to float free all the time. And opening a center sounds really hard and this is really easy. So yeah, never a bad first, first for a Yeah. Worst case scenario, you got a float tank in your hand. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. I mean, this just is going to cascade into all the second going. steps. So yeah, yeah. I guess we should just end it at some point here. Yeah, when you uh, hit your 10th year anniversary. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the first step for your 10th year anniversary is, yeah. Uh, okay, well, if you, have, uh, if you have questions of your own, go on over to... FloatTankSolutions.com Slash podcast. There's a question form right there. You can put a question in. We'll answer it. It'll be fun. It'll be fun for both of us. Yeah, we'll have a great time. Yeah. All right. Air five. Bye, everyone. <laughs>